Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to tie this fly and it's to honor one of the greatest fly fishermen and fishermen that I've known in my life, Atso Veselinovic, and he's from my hometown of Čačak from Serbia. Uh, why I think he's one of the greatest, it's very simple, it's because he definitely knew how to think like a fish. Uh, for most of us from Balkan, probably everyone, uh, at some point in our lives when we were fishing with lures, we were using one of his creations uh, called Ugly Duckling. Uh, that's a wooden lure that was super famous in our area. And I don't think there is a fisherman that like never used one of those. Maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, less known fact is that he was a great fly fisherman as well. And one of his famous flies are these floating nymphs uh, I'm not doing the exact recipe probably but it's something that I've seen long ago uh, more maybe 20 years ago from him and um, this is just how I remember it uh, and whenever I was using this fly uh, it produced really really well uh, so I was just thinking in his honor to share one of these flies with you guys and I hope you will enjoy it. Now when it comes to materials, first material is a hook and for that purpose you should use a relatively light hook if you want to fish this fly on a surface or heavy hook if you want it submerged. Ideally it should float flat with the film. Uh, that's why it's called floating nymph. Uh, two of my favorite materials are incorporated in this fly, one of them being portage. And you can use the, those black and white feathers or you can choose to use one of these darker ones. Uh, easy to prepare, you just do something like this, make it into a V. I'll show you later why. And then one CDC feather, and the feather should be relatively bad quality in this case. What I mean by it, it doesn't have to have those barbs super dense uh, because you don't want to overdress your fly. Um, for the body, you can use whatever. I was using, as you was you were seeing, dubbing on these flies. Buy it. Uh, barb from a feather that's probably forbidden in your area. So it's an owl but in my area is not forbidden so that's why I'm using it um, you can use it like literally whatever you want the, the whole idea of this fly is the construction of it apart from the hook uh, that you use obviously in size that's appropriate for the waters you're fishing uh, I want to use thin thread because I don't want too much build up over here but I do want to cinch down on some materials and that's why I'm using Semperfly, uh, Semperfly Nano Silk. Uh, obviously, Pheasant Tail is one of the really good choices for this fly. So I'll start in a regular, regular fashion with this fly. This is Jam Hitch. Now, first things first, you want to choose something for the tail. And the best choice would be, in my opinion, partridge. Uh, it just matches the legs and everything around. Now, you don't need too many barbs of a partridge, just a couple of them. And I'm going to counter spin the bobbin holder to make this just jump around me. And that's it. Now, because I'm going to use an owl feather here. Uh, I want to take care of like positioning of my wire from the far side and owl feather from my near side. But before I do that, I need to attach a couple of more barbs from the CD from the sorry from the CDC. Yes, not sorry. Now while partridge is relatively short, for the CDC you can go a little bit longer. Uh, and in my opinion, this represents trailing shuck it also adds buoyancy to your fly just position it on the top it it should extend a little bit further away 
again counter spin the bobbin holder make the thread jump where you want it and then very firmly two reps is enough to secure everything down now I want to cut these excess barbs and as you can see I'm aligning it with the end of the thread over here now as I was saying I want an owl barbs to be facing me and I want wire to be away from me I chose those darker barbs okay I, this was not good I want it near me okay this is okay and I'm just going a little bit into this bent not too much now I want to uh, secure the wire on the far side when I get to it I'm gonna explain why this step is important to keep everything on its side now underbody is already tapered a bit I'm not bothering about these tips they're gonna be covered and now I'm going to wrap an owl under and over from like the opposite so unconventional direction and because I'm going first under I'm literally avoiding those tails over here okay I need to just go slightly overlapping or touching turns now when it becomes short I'm just gonna hold it with one finger as you can see until I reach from under and take and wrap around now you can use your rotational function here and because this gets super short just need one wrap to secure and two to make sure and then you have those two locking wraps now when I'm wrapping wire it should go in the opposite direction of the barbs again avoiding the tail so this avoiding the displacement of tails wire is gold one I hope you don't mind the squeaking sound of the wire because I'm like cinching on it with my hands and then just break it off you don't have to be super neat about these things but it's just nice to be some like a bit neater now you can use the whole feather and wrap it around uh, and fold it back but if you use it like so it's a bit better so what do you do you take the whole feather strip off the lower ends lower barbs that you don't need and you literally want to uh, tie in here by maybe two millimeters over those barbs okay so when you tie it I'll just do it brief, briefly so you can see what I'm talking about so this is going to be your tying point so when you fold it over like so you're not going to use the middle portion with the rakis over here so when you tie it, let me show you that because it's important to notice that so you make your head trap here and all of those barbs that you can pull away here they're like ending here at the, at the, at the head you're going to use those all those barbs that are on the rake is wiggling here you're not going to use them so what are we going to do here instead of just bothering with all of these barbs basically I'm going to cut and prepare the feather pre prepare the feather before I actually tie it in and that's why you have this I want to have this nice pattern here for the cover but I also want to have enough legs for the later on that's the whole idea. I already prepared this one. So let me just make it symmetrical, like so. As you can see, it's prepared. It has nice 
pattern and just want to make it on the top of the hook for that it's easier if you work with flat thread and let the thread wrap this all around now at this point you can obviously cut this part here and the rake is that's left it has equal this equal length as it's the distance from this point here to the head because when you fold it over it matches the same is going to be true for the CDC so what I will, will do is I'm just gonna strip those lower bar barbs like so and I'm gonna strip those upper barbs using really really small amount of these CDC bars now some may say this may not be enough but we are not going to be the uh, we don't want this to be super floating it's going to be for the difficult fish and yeah so I'm gonna match those rachises here just match them okay I'll just one two and then I'll pull this one until it matches I pull too much I'll go again one two pull and now cinch down so it doesn't move and then again you don't need you can see that I'm not cutting it very short I want to have some taper that will actually allow me to tie a nicer profile thorax then green yellow orange whatever you want for the thorax area I've been using this green one for the whole day tying and now I'm gonna use this gray one matches better this is a squirrel dubbing mix that I made before we have a video on it and then I'm gonna use relatively thin noodle also a relatively tight noodle because I don't need too many spiky uh, hair sticking out of a thorax it's not a bad thing if you do have but you already have those legs that are going to make your fly look very buggy and it will make a profile of a cripple spent it can be so many things in my opinion because when you finish this fly you will see it very soon it can be any everything and nothing and yeah so I'm trying to match it here so I don't have any gaps now I do want to have a relatively um, big gap between uh, hook eye so I want this to be relatively big I'll just cover it with a little bit of thread to make some more to make more friction and now I'm gonna fold it over you can push it with your nail a little bit tighten it one two to catch everything nicely as you can see it has nice wing case cover over here I was going backwards to create slight uh, distance here and place to catch everything now just you need to divide those in relatively e equal halves now I'll just look from few angles if it's good I'm gonna catch one side like so keep it sideways let me show you and catch it with my thread with just half turn thread and then another one caught on the far side that's all you need basically correct everything hold it with your fingers soft wrap and then pull soft wrap and pull it should keep it in place Now, if you're crazy, like me sometimes, you want to pull those hairs out. 
Ideally, they shouldn't be here, but yeah, sometimes they are. This is the time I want to use two finishes. One is to keep everything in, in the place, and the other one is to hide everything here. Obviously, I want to make a little bit of a head here. For the whiff finish that you're going to make with dubbing, hidden one, you want to make dubbing noodle extremely thin, extremely compact, uh, in order to make this not whiff finish not uh, durable. So, I don't think I need more. And I'll do it with my hands. I like to use with this dominant hand, I like to keep everything in place. So make those wraps consecutive, one after another. And that's it. Okay. I'm just going to tighten the knot even more to make sure everything is well done. Okay, and now I'm going to make some tension, push my scissors in between. You can wiggle down those wings or legs, whatever you think they represent. So, how I would how I fish this fly? It's very simple. You have those. CDC barbs and yes I do make them a little bit more full as this one over here if I'm going to use it in a little bit faster water I'm going to use this one if the water is super super flat like a, like a mirror I'm going to use this one and uh, it's going to hold it on the surface obviously longer leader gentle more gentle cast uh, use a little bit of floatant on the tails or or the trailing shock as I as I think fish see this and also you put those on those wings and legs so partridge is here to suggest that contrast that uh, insects have in their legs sometimes uh, it doesn't aid buoyancy obviously CDC aids buoyancy but all together with the trailing shock or tail it has, has those three points where the fly will lean on the surface creating creating surface tension and thus making this float. Obviously, we are not going to be able to see this fly on the surface because it's going to lay flush with the surface, but you're going to see the take. So all you need to do is to follow your fly as you cast it and where it lands, and when you let it drift down the current, just if you see the fish rising around the place where you think your fly is, set a hook. Don't set it like crazy, maniac. Just tighten everything up and that's it. Mm. These flies are mostly used for grailing in my country. For the trout, you may want to use something more durable, maybe for the wing case cover, or like adjust the fly to your needs, or I mean, I don't care if trout breaks my fly, if a trout is good. So, because I use these flies on a difficult fish, and difficult fish are usually larger ones, meaning that if I have one large fish with one fly and after that the fly is destroyed, I'm perfectly fine with that because it made my day. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.